The new Samsung Galaxy A53 5G is an interesting device with a new processor, but does that mean anything for camera performance? It does. I'll explain in the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G camera test. Let's look at some test shots, including landscapes, selfies, and night shots, then I'll show you which Gcam Go port I had to shoot with, and what specific settings I used for both camera apps. Let's start with this flower portrait mode shot. The stock Samsung camera app provides much more of a bokeh effect than Gcam, but this is adjustable for the stock camera after you take the photo. Both apps oversaturate the images, but they still look okay. Here's my dog, and this shot sums up the usual differences between the two camera apps. Gcam is overall brighter, which often results in blown highlights, and it's more saturated, while the stock camera is is better at controlling highlights, but colors are generally more muted and typically darker. These trends continue with the fake flower and spiky plant dog hybrid shot. Samsung camera is too dark, Gcam too bright, but this time it's easier to see that the stock camera is also more detailed than this Gcam port. Why couldn't this be a Chia pet dog? Those are amazing. Here's an example of where Gcam wins for the A53. Technically, it's a bit oversaturated, but if you were going to post one of these images without editing, I would guess most would choose the brighter, bolder Gcam image. I got under a train for this shot, which was a bad idea. Train cars are really really loud when they start, but Gcam looks terrible here, like there was some type of haze over the lens. And the Samsung camera looks pretty good. Here again, Gcam wins in this shot from the tree graveyard, since the stock camera is just too dark, even though it is sharper. I saw this bird and I took these shots as fast as I could, zoomed in as far as possible, and the stock camera wins easily, even though this water behind the bird looks almost like a water painting. Here's that loud train again, and I do prefer the brighter, less detailed Gcam shot. If I zoom in on these branches, you can again see just how little detail Gcam is capturing. The stock camera is clearly sharper. In fact, I'd say a little over sharpened this time. How about an indoor scene? I would say Gcam wins again since there isn't a bright light source for it to blow out, and the Samsung is just too dark, which makes this plant just look strange. With this tree shot, I again think the stock camera looks unnatural due to over sharpening, but Gcam looks poor as well thanks to this blown out sky. The Samsung camera does a great job with this fire hydrant, but Gcam is far too bright and the green in the grass is not true to life at all. How about a sky shot? Gcam looks awful, almost like there's a hole in the sky, and it's scared to show anything tan or yellow in the grass. The stock camera isn't great, but it's certainly usable. Selfies, night mode shots, and video samples are next. But if you're finding this video helpful, please give it a like and thank you for that. For selfies, the stock camera wins. This is from the main rear camera, and both do a decent job, with Gcam being somewhat more saturated. But with portrait mode on the main camera, the Samsung app easily wins due to better edge detection. Here's a shot from the actual selfie camera, and both look fine. But again, Gcam struggles with edge detection when portrait mode is on. Here's one more trashy photo using the selfie camera outdoors, and Gcam still just can't handle the highlights, this time from my blindingly white shirt. Night mode is usually even worse using Gcam. Here's a selfie from the main camera in a very dark room, and the stock camera really does a great job. If anything, it's a little too bright and almost unnatural. Gcam is unusable. Quality falls off a cliff when shooting in night mode using the selfie camera. At least the Samsung camera is probably bright enough, but it's still extremely noisy and blurry. I actually think Gcam does a better job with this fire hydrant at night because the stock camera really over brightens the shot. Both struggle with the front of this car and look pretty noisy, but at least the stock camera is still usable. Again, both apps don't do the best job here, but Samsung is able to capture a better shot of this orange street lamp. And this is a worst case scenario, almost no light at all on this white figure, and the stock camera is still able to at least show that something's there. For video shooting, just use the stock Samsung camera. Whether it's the main camera or selfie camera, it will not only be better exposed, but also much better stabilized. Also, unlike Gcam, both the main and selfie camera can record in 4K at 30 frames per second, but you do lose much of the stabilization. You might be wondering why I use Gcam Go, a version of Gcam for low-spec budget devices, for this comparison. I had to. I tried nearly 20 other Gcam ports and could only ever get video to work properly. I believe this is due to the new Exynos processor used in the A53. There are some ports for Exynos devices like ZGcam from developer Zorin and some of the recent BSG ports, but at the time of filming, I guess this processor is just too new and the full Gcam ports will need to be updated to work properly. I did try the typical tricks like changing the viewfinder format, turning off Google Lens suggestions, and turning off framing hints, but I could not get any ports to work well enough to test with. Links for the Gcam Go port I used in the review are in the description, but definitely check out some other sites for working ports as time goes on and developers get around to modifying the true Gcam to fully work with this device. The settings I used for the stock Samsung camera app were left at the default, so scene optimizer, video stabilization, and auto HDR were all active. For Gcam Go, all pictures 
pictures were taken with HDR on, face retouch off, and night mode activated for the night shots. Overall, I think the stock Samsung camera's photos are decent most of the time, just a bit dark. This phone is set to get OS updates for another four years, so there's plenty of time for this camera to get even better with software improvements. But for now, even if you aren't a fan of the stock Samsung camera, you only have one G Cam alternative, and unfortunately it's not great. But if you think the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G is the right phone for you, you should check out Wireless Place, since they have unlocked Samsung devices as well as phones from Xiaomi, Poco, Motorola, OnePlus, and more. I've bought a few phones from Wireless Place, and they always ship fast and ship internationally. They have great prices and include a US adapter for the charger if you need it. Please use my discount code PC10 when you check out. If you want to support the channel or just want to save a little money, a link to the site is in the description. Please subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and feel free to comment with any other ports you would like me to test with, or any questions you might have, and I will answer them perfectly, figuratively.